something every time we meet, I tell my people, I, I, you know, there's tons of screen printers and embroiders even in our town. And I, my, I always tell them, I said, the key to this thing is. We had Leah from 918 Design Co. out of Tulsa, Oklahoma today. She 5X'd her company's growth within three years. I'm talking 250K ish to above a million dollars in sales now. And she really dives into it. I mean, she kind of simplified. There's just a couple of things that, that she did really well to be able to scale to that. And that's what she's emphasizing to grow to the next step. Yeah. I was really surprised to hear the decisions that she made hiring a business coach. We're going to talk about Google reviews. We're going to talk about SEO. Um, and then the, the the problems that she's now tackling now at the next level of business. Um, I think this episode will resonate a lot with uh, shop owners. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe, like, comment, because um, we love those. And uh, let's hear from our sponsors first, Bruce. GraphX Source. If you guys need a solution to improve efficiency and reduce costs in your art department, you got to check this out. GraphX Source helps shops be able to manage their art department, handle things like digitizing, vectorizing, SEP, even back up office admin, building online stores and customer service. They've been doing it for over 30 years and plug into your existing workflow. So whether it's on Printavo or any other shop management platform, they'll be able to help you be able to uh, take over your art department. So that's really cool. If you mention the Printavo pod, you get 50% off your first vector, SEP, or embroidery order. Bruce, have you heard of Multicraft underscore daddy? Um, I, I think he's close to 900 followers on Instagram, but if you need ink supplies or a daddy, Multicraft screen printing and digital supplies for over 50 years has been providing you with top brands at competitive prices. Um, Dave is giving away a case of PMI tape per episode. Um, you can simply DM him on Instagram. He'll pick a winner each week. And uh, it's Multicraft Daddy branded PMI tape. It's super special. So thanks so much to the Multicraft team. Mention the Printavo podcast and receive an extra 10% off your first order. Steven, are you spending all day cleaning dirty screens? Yes. Easy Ways line of environmentally <laughs> conscious chemicals help you get the job done faster and more efficiently. Plus, we'll get it done for a fraction of the cost per screen. Campus Sync's favorite Easy Way chemicals are 701 and 842. That helps you clean them up. If you need a company that values helping you and just a really good partner, especially in, in Reclaim, Easy Way is there to to be able to, to help you with best practices and how to's they work with a hundred plus distributors all over the U S so you guys can be able to purchase all the stuff you need as quickly as possible. Give it a go. Check them out. Easy way systems. Sweet. Um, Bruce, um, I know that you have been heat pressing and we heat press <laughs> a lot too. And Supacolor is the world's best heat transfer made for screen printers by screen printers. They understand the pressures and expectations of a screen printing business. And that's why they pride themselves on being super fast and super easy. You're going to hear it on the podcast today. Uh, Leah did not buy a DTF because she loves buying transfers and you should buy transfers too from Supacolor. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a pickle and Supacolor came through for me. Experience them from yourself using promo code PRINTAVO15. Get 15% off your first order. Thanks so much, Supercolor. We appreciate you. All right. Let's jump in the show. But really quick, don't forget, Print Hustlers Conf is coming up. Make sure to get your tickets before they're sold out. We're really excited. It's in Newport Beach, California, November 4th, November 5th, and November 6th. That's in Newport Beach. You can go to printhustlers.com, grab your tickets. We've got speakers. We've got just hangout. We've got breakout sessions. We've got Printavo and Inksoft training sessions. We've got VIP dinners. And a really cool tour of the Bella and Canvas factory in Los Angeles. Excited to see you there. All right. All right, Leah. We are here. We're live. We had no technical issues getting started, so we are ready to go. Thank you for joining us this morning. Oh, thank you for inviting me. The founder of 918 Design Company. Um, I heard about you as you came through like our, our sales flow with Inktavo and everything, but you're based out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? 
Correct. And running uh, an embroidery. Like what I heard was just, this is a really cool embroidery shop. She's awesome. She's really pushing this thing forward. She's got an interesting line of, of gymnastics wear. And that was like the high level chapters. And then I was like, wow, this is kind of fascinating. We should dig a little bit deeper. So we we do have embroidery equipment. We do uh, retail embroidery and contract embroidery. Uh, I've been in business for over 25 years, but um, really and truly the first, I don't know, most of that, um, just more or less treated it like a job, you know, is uh, I could raise my children, work around their schedule, but yet make good money when I did work. Um, I had employees at times, you know, but, but still it was, you know, definitely just more like a job. And a couple of years ago, I decided to just actively start growing the company and, and we've done real well. Um, we had screen printing in house, uh, a long time ago. Um, my uh, husband ran the screen printing equipment and I lost him in an automobile accident. And so I ended up contracting my screen printing out for, for quite a few years. And it just, as we started growing the company, it just got to the point that um, in, in the last 12 month period before we brought it back in house, we'd spent over a hundred thousand dollars on screen printing and it, and yet we didn't have control of our schedule um, you know, did, we didn't have control and, and we were spending all that money. So we brought it back in house. And when we did that, we felt like our current way of managing our workflow probably wasn't going to work for us anymore. <laughs> so we ended up adding Printabo. Wow. I do not recommend bringing screen printing in house and adding Printabo <laughs> on the same week. Same time. Oh, same oh, week. Okay. You did it all <laughs> yeah. in the same week. I do not recommend that at wow. all. I really wish we had brought Printavo in and got all situated with where we, you know, in the calm and then brought screen printing in and wow. created did, the storm. Did you buy new equipment when you came back we, into it? Did you buy new equipment? Tell me we about did. that. We bought a Rock U 812 and a Rock gas dryer. And okay. then we've since added a little manual just to get things moving, you know, small jobs, one color stuff, just to yeah. kind of try to get a better workflow. Do you still sub jobs out that are like too hard to screen print or out of out of your shop scope or like, or do you do everything in house now? Everything in house. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's really interesting. I get a lot of shops that'll say I need to buy more equipment or I sub stuff out or I exclusively sub stuff out. Um, what for you besides the money, was there ever a peace of mind that like you could just send it somewhere else and someone else would do it? Like, did you like that at all? Or like, yeah. Hindsight. (laughs) Hindsight. That was a really good deal because it's been rocky the last month. Um, but no, it, it was more about just having control where, you know, if our biggest customer called and really needed 50 shirts Friday, me frantically trying to find a place to put those or having to move someone else um, to Monday to get those on Friday, just the the Tetris game that we had to play with the schedule. And we still have to do that in-house, but, you know, I can just walk out there and say, hey, you want a couple hours overtime? I've got these 50 shirts I really need printed by Friday. You can print them tonight, tomorrow night, or, you know, Thursday night, or whatever. And the and then my printer can decide, oh, hey, yeah, I'll stay, I'll stay Thursday and print them. No problem, you know? And so I just, I have that control and, and it was just getting to the point that was important. And then the money was a huge factor too, because we're spending all that money and, and didn't have control of the schedule. I mean, there were times in September, you know, they'd be three weeks out and uh, we're probably three weeks out too, but yet I can still take our biggest customer and put a job on Friday if I want. You said things have been rocky recently. What oh my is gosh. that like a sales <laughs> thing or a people thing, or that's just no, the new equipment it's stuff? A, it's all the things. Um, ah. So, so like we had Matt come in and, uh, the week he was there to do our, um, our Printavo, uh, the rock people had been there the week before and it happened to be 108 in Oklahoma and our, uh, humidity was like 80%. 
And around 11 o'clock, I guess, our uh, power company was throttling our electricity. And so we couldn't print after like 11. But we didn't really know why. So we had electricians out. So Matt's supposed to be there getting in Printavo going. And he's out there because, you know, he knows a lot about screen printing. So he's out there trying to figure out our equipment. But he's an MR guy. And just, you know, it, it, it was crazy. Matt did help us, him and the electrician, everybody. We did get it diagnosed that it was a power issue because of the heat. And so then we finally figured out if we turned all the air conditioners off in the building, we could continue to print shirts for the rest of the day. So, you know, that was a whole week of just figuring out what in the world was going on. And then we've had some staffing issues, too. It's just it, it, I feel like it's smoothing out now, but, and then August is just a beast because we do so much school stuff. And uh, so, yeah, August w- was probably my least favorite month in the 25 plus <laughs> years. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll commend Matt Marcotte. Uh, he's going to listen to this and it's going to get to his head. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, uh, Matt has literally lived around the printing industry for m- probably the majority of his life and will come on site and implement Printavo. But a second part about Matt is he knows printing so well, he's probably going to help you in other ways. <laughs> so yeah. that's, that's yeah. kind of cool. Well, he was an um, electrician, it sounds like, too. I guess he, he, Matt was an electrician. He was amazing. And, uh, you know, I think it would have taken a lot more time to diagnose the problem without him there. I would have probably gotten frustrated with rock um, while he was, you know, if he hadn't been there and, and it actually, it wasn't rock's fault at all. They had, they, they weren't, even, they're not even involved in the problem. And, but to me, it would have been their piece of equipment wasn't working. So it had to be their problem. Right. But it's not, it, it, you know, it's a, an electrical um, power supply issue and this insane heat that we've had this month. You, you talked about also a few years ago, right? Like really kicking things in the, up in the high gear. Um, and then now having you, you're so schools focused, it sounds like, and maybe there's some other spaces too that are big. We'll get into but like, what did you do to flip things into high gear that 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 really you know changed this this business's trajectory? Um, we hired a business coach. Hmm. Oh, and where did um, you find them? They're actually local. Um, they know nothing about. It. I mean, they know a little bit about our industry, but they're not an industry person. You know, it's not you know not one of those people. Um, the Google's huge for us. Um, we, we made an all out effort to get lots and lots of Google reviews. Um, we try to post stuff on Google, um, pictures, photos, um, a- every day. Haven't been so good about that the last month. We've derailed a few, few things, um, since the beginning of August, but we'll get back to them. We'll, we'll circle back. Uh, we, uh, we put, started putting some systems in place to where, you know, we could grow. There were, you know, there were things that my business coach wanted me to do that I didn't really see the point in at the time. But then when we got there, it, it made it made sense. Um, I'm really good at getting a business to the worst point possible. So, like, I could go anywhere in the country and open a business and have it sell in $250,000 in literally no time. And two fifty to three hundred, in my opinion, is a horrible place to be in this industry because it's just chaos and you need more people, but you don't really have the money to hire the people that you need to hire. Um, I also think that 1.2 to 1.5 is that exact same spot. And that's where we are now. Really? <laughs> is right, Wait, why right is in that? that? But just because, again, I think we just need to be a little bigger. To where we can hire a production manager. I, you know, I, I listened to one podcast and you said you should have one at two million. And I get up every day thinking, how can I get to two million so I can hire that production manager? Bruce said I could hire. Um, I just uh, we. That's when it's going to be easier for me, I think, because I just work so many hours right now, and. I need that person in to take some of that off. And, and I've created this, you know, I mean, because 
a couple of hundred thousand ago, it wasn't near as complicated as it is now, but you just, I think we're just kind of right in that bad spot. So was that that break really- point? That break point, was that because of your time you felt got totally filled up between a yeah. couple hundred thousand ago and now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm there. I, I'm I'm there 12 to 14 hours a day right now and six to seven days a week. What's I, your I business coach say about now. that? Yeah. What is your business? Well, I'm really interested in this business coach because my yeah, business that, coach this is cool. Says the trick to success is to get up before you go to bed. So he doesn't have a problem with it because <laughs> he's one of those 80 hour a week kind of people. Yeah. <laughs> I gotcha. so, but, yeah. but, but there are things that you did, like you have, you know, just on a quick Google search, two locations. Uh, one location has 375 star reviews. The other has 75 five star reviews. Bruce, if we were to Google search tons of embroidery shops, it's probably up there for the most amount of like positive reviews. In screen right? shops now. But yeah, definitely. Um, and you have multiple locations on there, which like it's not necessarily simple to do. When did you when did you get when was that 300 number and then you just kind of said you're at that 1.2 number was that in the last couple of years like Yes. Okay. Pretty substantial <laughs> yes. growth. Yeah. Yes. That's off. Um, um, and the second location was more out of necessity. So our first location is a little bitty spot. Our embroidery machines fit in there just fine. Um <clears throat> it's 1500 square feet, one bathroom. I mean it got to the point we just had too many people in there for the bathroom, you know? I mean you need more than one bathroom. And so we started, look, we tried to move in the same building and it just didn't work out. And so we found this spot where we're at now. It's huge. It had room for spring, screen printing equipment to come in. And so we leased it in December of last year and then brought the screen printing equipment in um, in, in July of this year. Wow. So, I mean, we knew we were going to do that when we leased the space. That kind of growth, though, like... Going from 300 to 1.345 in the last like three years, what do you think, how, how did that growth happen? Was it organic? Is there something specific you did? Because I'm hearing like you've had some pretty awesome sales. Um, really a whole lot of it's Google. I mean, it's so, so simple. Just Google. And something every time we meet, I tell my people uh, I, you know, there's tons of screen printers and embroiderers, even in our town. And I, my, I always tell them, I said, the key to this thing is to answer the phone. If we answer the mm. phone, we're ahead of half of the people. Yeah, I mean, we've eliminated half of our competition if we just answer the phone. Preach. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. That the, It's crazy because we call on a lot of shops that obviously reach out to us. And the amount of times that we can't get a hold of anybody you know, everybody's busy and so on, but I, I'm just like customers, I'm sure call and can't get a hold of people. Um, we had our phone. I think we still have our phone number. We had it for a long time on the top of the page because that was a big differentiator as well. Call, um, we pick up. If not, I'm going to call you right back and text you. And you're right. I think it was a huge differentiator. I mean, I remember, I still remember this. I called one time I missed a flight. And I was kind of standing at the desk. One I had called I missed a flight. <laughs> <laughs> well, this time I missed a flight and uh, the to book a flight at the desk was like fifteen hundred dollars or something for one way. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so much. And so I called Delta and I waited in line and like, you know, you go on hold and I'm like, ah, geez, I'm going to be waiting here for a long time. And then I called Alaska Air. And they picked up after two rings with a human, like an <laughs> actual person, right? And I was, I was shocked. I was like, well, uh, oh yeah, wow. Um, can I'm just looking for last minute flight and so on. Anyway, I still remember that to this day, and I'm like telling the story because it's such a almost magical experience. Because you're right, the bar is so low, and that's for the taking. L- Leah, what what did you do to get those Google reviews? Um, did you use an app, a tool? Do you just hand out cards? Like how, like you've got 400 we, five star reviews. We ask what, for them. You um, ask for them. Yeah. And, and we, we do events. Um, we sell in the gymnastics industry and we actually go on site. We have a line of clothing that we sell. And then a lot of times we've done the event t-shirt as well. 
Uh, we'll throw up an online store, let people pre-order, and then we'll take some to press there, or we'll just press there. But anyway, those people, um, you know, some uh, we get to know those people because we see them repeatedly, and you know, the owners of the gyms and stuff like that we get to know. And so, a lot of them do come from the gymnastics industry. But my very first clients back in 1997 were gymnastics people. So I have a lot of near and near and dear friends in the, in that industry. So so a lot of them have come from there. But we do ask in store too. We uh you know we send people a text with a link. Hey, we do a Google review. And um, I if I tell my people, hey, we got to get Google reviews, got to get got to get Google reviews, then they do better for a while. And then I have to you know. I just definitely have to constantly remind people to ask for them because they are super important and they do really help. And then it also um, makes it to where, you know, if you do get a bad review that it's, it's yeah, offset too. by all those good ones too. All right, real quick. I got to tell you something. This is really interesting and here's why. We formed a company called Inktava. You may have heard of it, but it has three different brands right now. Printavo, Inksoft, and Graphics. So we're all sister companies now, a big happy family. What we're able to do is Printavo is managing your shop management and workflow organization. Inksoft can run your website and handle online stores at scale. So running multiple different stores for fundraisers, schools, um, company stores and everything in between. And Graphics Flow is a brand new product to be able to help reduce all the back and forth with art. So it has a huge art library that you can put on your website so customers can see and pluck what they want. Plus, you can also be able to collect different ideas and send them to customers to approve as well. Really, really cool. Plus, in app editing, it's like Canva, but specifically for shops. All right. Check it out. All those brands are on inktavo.com. That's inktavo.com. All right, thanks. Uh, it's not a fun day at Campus Inc. if we get a negative review. Everyone's like, <laughs> duck and cover. Um, <laughs> uh, when you talk about you growing your business, you talked about like embroidery and then screen printing. How much, what's the percentage of split like between embroidery and screen print for you, do you think? Oh, probably half and half. Um, and then we've got the whole little DTF thing in there too, which is probably 10% or so. Did, um, did you guys buy a machine or do you? No, or? because Stephen Farrick told me not to. <laughs> <laughs> he told me to wait. <laughs> he told oh, me to wait funny. until I was spending $5,000 a month on transfers and I listened. <laughs> and, yeah, I keep, keep and doing he that. Said, Every day I wait that I'm better off. So. Now, there's someone here right across the street from our embroidery location that I order one day. We pick them up the next day. They're priced reasonably. We've had oh, wow. zero quality issues. And I just don't see a reason for me to fight that fight at this point. You know, maybe in the future, if if the technology's uh, like to where the maintenance isn't such a big issue, then maybe. But right now, this is working for us really well. Leah, it sounds like you run a very like... Um... I don't want to say like a happy business, but like you take care of your people, you do the right things. Like what is your, what is your customer service team look like? Like, do you have a leader there? Like, are there a bunch of people at the front desk? Like, tell us about that, that organizational structure. So we have an office manager at each location. Um, they're both really, really good. It's Annika and Brittany. I'm so blessed to have both of them. Um, Annika didn't come from the industry at all, but she's just really a, a take charge, but not in a bad way. Uh, get things done, list maker, note taker. You know, she just like has all those just like basic qualities that make her a, a great employee and the customers really like her. So she's been really successful. And at, when we brought a little before we brought screen printing in, I just moved to the second location and gave her my office over there. So she pretty much completely runs the embroidery side of things. And then at the at the location where the screen printing is, is Brittany. And she has worked in the industry at another shop. And so she came in knowing some things, but she's just done real good. She's real sweet. And she's also a note taker, list maker. And you just have to be those two things if you're going to do the customer service because of just all the add-ons, takeaways, changes, and deadline moving, all that. So she does a really good job. Customers really like her too. Um, and then um, we have, of course, an embroidery machine operator, a trimmer finisher that works part-time. 
Um, we have someone that's in shipping, receiving and heat pressing. She kind of does both. And then at times if she's um, overwhelmed, we'll get someone in there to help her. Um, and then a graphic designer and then the screen printing people and wow. a sign person. Wow. Do they, do they, do you guys print your own signs or do you sub them out or? Uh, we'll, we do anything you can do on a ladder. Gotcha. And gotcha. anything above a ladder, then we um, have a partnership with a company that has trucks and everything. We don't do a ton of signs, just a little bit, you know, just if people call um, and it, we feel like it's something that fits, then we'll take the job. And if not, well, you know, we refer them. Yeah, it seems like your like business is very well rounded. Um, like it, you're you're hitting all the different plugs and 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 there. How how do you strategize or think about your business? Like, do you meet with your business coach regularly? How do you attribute the success you've had in the last couple of years? Um, and obviously, there's there's some rocky and bumpy roads, but like, what do you attribute that success to? Well, I meet with my business coach every Tuesday morning at nine nine to ten. Um, and we just go over a few things. Um, the, the person in charge, I don't meet with him. It, I meet with someone under him each week. Now the, the gentleman that owns the company, of course I can meet with, you know, I can, I could talk to him anytime I want, but I really don't have to. Um, he sometimes, uh, you know, my, my business coach that I actually meet with will be like, Oh, Hey, he said we should do blah, 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 you know? And so then we figure out how we're going to implement all that. So he does come up with strategies and things. They write SEO for us. They handle our website. Um, they, uh, make recommendations for like Google ads, Facebook ads, that type of thing. We really haven't ran a lot of, of Facebook ads, but um, they, they do help with, you know, like the keyword stuff and all of that. So they just kind of take care of all that part. And I really don't have to think about it. And all I know is that our phone rings. So I don't worry about it too much. I don't analyze it too much. I just let them do their thing because it uh, is apparently working. What year were you at about 250 can sales? Um, so in 20. Well, in, in 2020, of course, you know, that was a whole different thing. But it really there and before uh, 2021, um, we did around 600. And 2022, we were like low 900s, much to my dismay. Um, this and this, <laughs> yeah, this year, um, we we should be one three probably uh, that, that would be my guess so 5x in like a couple of years which is which is really cool i like it, it it sounds like there's these tactical things right that you did really well the coach helped a lot you know you did a lot of work the seo there were google reviews starting to build out the team starting to build out systems i'm curious um because it feels like there's also a change in the person like the business owner, you, the, the personality, like how you approach things is different three years ago, I'm sure, than how you approach problems and growing the business now. What do you, like, how do you feel like you as a person has changed over this period? Um, yeah, I've had a lot of problems in the last month. So I, um, <laughs> I, I've actually had some time to reflect on that. Um, I just, you know, three years ago, um, why well, I, I still have to be reactionary and I want to get to the point where we play offense instead of defense, but, um, definitely three years ago, it was me doing all the processes, you know, I might have an employee, but still for the most part, it was me, you know, me running the embroidery machines, me running the laser engraver. And now, you know, my goal is to get me out of the weeds, as you would say, and, to where I'm never in production and that that's not always how it goes down, but that, you know, that is the goal. And I, I really try to, I mean, like I have a staffing issue right now that is a big one, but I just go to work and smile and nod because it's not in my company's best interest for me to address it today. I'm working on it. And I think I'll get to address it next week, but I I can't leave. You know, I'm responsible for nine people's livelihood. So 
so I can't make rash decisions. I, I have to, I, I have to think. I have to, I have to be where my feet are, and I have to think, and I have to look long range mm-hmm. instead of just being so reactionary. Because I do have, you know, I am responsible for so many people now. Do you, Leah, do you have any other managers that are responsible for anyone, or do you oversee all nine? Like, do they directly report to you? Not really. Um, Annika, um, our trimmer finisher over there, that person, Emma, definitely reports to Annika. Um, and then like um, our our screen washer, you know, I really don't have a ton of interaction with that person. They pretty much report to the printer. Um, but, you know, we're still small enough, you know, definitely. I mean, if somebody's going to miss a day of work, I'm who they text. Gotcha. Do you think you, do you think you're good at uh, being able to like because you said let them kind of figure out the problems? Do you think you're actually good at um, not? Right, I'll just do it, you know, type of knee jerk reaction yet, or have you mastered um, it? No, I definitely don't want to do it. Um, I don't have I don't have time, so I I'm never going to take it from someone to be like, That's oh, awesome. I'll just do it. I'm really I've gotten really good at delegating the last couple of years. It's just, there's got to be someone there to delegate to. And, um, you know, if, if you have, if you have staffing issues, if you have attendance issues, you know, people that aren't reliable, that really, that really ruins my day. Um, yeah. I feel like this spot that you're in right now, like so many other shops are listening to this resonating with that, where it's like, you are the boss, the owner, the HR manager, the caretaker, the psychologist, the therapist, all that kind of stuff. Right. If you, I, I always like to ask if you just decided not to go into the shop tomorrow, didn't say a word, just didn't show up. What would go wrong in the business? Well, we probably wouldn't screen print anything because that, that's just not the way it needs to be. And hopefully we will get that fixed in the next uh, week or so. So nothing, nothing uh, would get printed. Yeah. Okay. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not, but keep going, keep, keep riffing on and this. Cause really, I think this is really cool. The embroidery site is pretty set up. annika has got that under control. Um, she builds the schedule. Um, she, um, we're still implementing Printavo, but we're, she's getting everything over into the power scheduler. Um, Rayleigh's pretty self-sufficient. Annika would direct her a little. Brittany would direct her a little as far as, hey, these are the priorities. Um, Rayleigh's a real good worker, but, you know, she doesn't, she just does what's in front of her, you know, and so someone would have to direct her. But I think it would all go pretty well, except for the the screen printing part. Now, they'd be ready for me to come back um, because, um, you know, I do, I have my own customers that I take care of and just, you know, some traffic direction and things that would fall on Brittany and Annika and they would get overwhelmed pretty quickly, which is why we're really close to the point of needing a manager. But I just don't feel like the funds are there, you know, because you can't hire that person for $15 an hour. Um, I don't feel like the funds are there to to hire that person. And when we get there and we're and we're close, I don't know when we get there, I'm willing to I'm willing to take myself off salary to absorb that person in for a little while and then put me back on, you know, if there needs to be a three or four month transition to where, cause I think they'll pay for themselves in the time they give me because I'm pretty good at sales. And, you know, if I just reached out to my top 20 customers more often, we'd have more revenue, but I don't have time to do that. It's an interesting, yeah. like, um, like slippery slope in a good and bad way. Like I remember right. doing that a lot too on the engineering front for, for products like, ah, I'll just like, like I don't need the salary. I will, like we do, we need to hire this role. And I see the point because you can slingshot and you probably like to your point should be spending most of the time on sales. Right. So that's your, your huge value add. And then the flip side I see is I like the profit first side of my brain pops up, which is like, (laughs) um, you're just trying to make it work by, right. By taking it off your plate, which is a never ending cycle. Like there will be something else that you say, I could just do that again. Um, yeah, but I can I can cash out on the back side if we got oh, like on that, dividends. If we got that, 
evened out. And if I got my time freedom back, you know, I mean, right now I have none. I would literally have to get on an airplane to not be at work. You know, that's the only way I could be like, (laughs) that's our latest corking idea. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Let's build an airplane uh, (laughs) office. Airplane (laughs) Chrome extension. But uh, Um, it's interesting that you say this because sometimes like, when we starve the business for what it needs, it highlights what we should be working on and then what we urgently need to fix. Right. Um, and so I just, I hear this, like I need to pump oxygen in the fire, but I need to keep the fire moving, but it's okay if the fire dwindles for a little while I'm pumping oxygen into it, but I don't want to run out of money. I'm curious, like with your team, I don't know, you, you spoke really highly of like Annika and Brittany, right? Were those the two? Uh, do you ever share like profit numbers with them so you can get them bought into the bigger picture like hey if we if we get to this number i can hire someone let's go let's go let's go like how how much do you share with the team um no i i no i don't um and maybe i should i but i i i don't um do you do that steven when you were a lot smaller um so uh there's a comfortable balance because an employee you own the business, so it's your own privacy, but there is a level of responsibility that you can give the team to understand margins and how much contribution margin they're bringing. And if they make a substantial impact, how that can positively affect them. So when things are bad, like, you know, we raise money and everyone thinks, oh my God, they have this war chest of investors. Well, really what that means is we actually have to lose money for a long time to be able to get to that point. And so we're very transparent about like, we have to climb to this number. We need to get to that number. This is not good. This is bad. Um, But early on, there were like a couple people that I would at least share like our expenses with or go through some like gross profit goals so that they could see when I was happy and then they could see like mm, areas of weakness or frustration. Um, But not so much that it was overwhelming, I think. Um, you know, but I, I don't know. I I think there's a comfortable balance. I don't know, Bruce, what do you think? Um, just from sharing, talking to a lot of shop owners, I think a lot of people worry about that, but I think to your point, it depends on the type of person. So, you know, there's some that, that, you know, would be, you know, I hate to say, but like digging in your pockets type of way, uh, or or like asking for more or working less because of that, because they're already thinking that, well, the owners must be, you know, crushing it. They're, they're, they're making so much money and they're, you know, doing this and that when a lot of times, you know, they don't know that you're probably going to forego salary to try to hire this person unless, uh, they just see, or, or like thousand dollar job, $3,000 job, like, Um, and so it's tricky in black and white. I think as the company gets bigger though, I have found that when you said, you said something earlier, Leah, about, you know, I'm responsible for nine people. I felt that too. And then I also felt, oh, I should probably align people longer than just like next week's, uh, things that we have to get done. Like what, what are the, what what should we all be looking for to achieve together by this year or next year? Like, where is this company even going over five years and helping people start to think about that? What was the couple goals that we could all wrap our minds around? Like, all right, a, we want to be the best, for example, shop management platform. Okay. B we want to help uh, 5,000 shops around the world be able to do that. Okay. So that was the kind of one hairy metric that, that we can all align around and maybe it's revenue or maybe it's orders or turnaround time, whatever it is that started to help align. And maybe that could be, um, a more transparent or something that people cared about. Cause I also found that revenue was harder for us to, um, like get people fired up on, especially as it continues to grow. So what was the number that really related to what people do every day, which totally depends on every shop. Yeah. Leah, do you do any, like, I mean, you obviously work with your business coach and if you're listening to this and you don't have a business coach, get one. Uh, I have an advisor. I meet with them regularly. You're hearing Leah, you know, you've heard tons of shops. I think they're super helpful. Do you ever publish to your team what you're envisioning the company, like a, 
like a roadmap or goal setting or quarterly things, like even with a couple of them? Well, we, you know, I mean, I think we've just kind of been working towards getting screen printing in house. And then now we've done that. And it's just been such a cluster that I mean, we have a Monday morning meeting every Monday at 730. And we haven't had that in the last month. I mean, there's just like, everything has derailed. And so like my total focus is just trying to get it all back on track. And, um, you know, Matt's been so helpful. I'm, I'm so glad that I had him come in because he's like invested in my success and seems to genuinely care um, about our success. And so I have a weekly call with him right now too, you know, wow. and I learn something every week from, from Matt <laughs> and, um, I, uh, I hated that the podcast was today just because I feel like we're so, so out of sorts, but well, we'll but we are, but again. we're not. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> we'll do We'll do another yeah, recap a year from now or something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, but Matt's been a big help and hopefully we'll get, you know, the screen printing, uh, ship steered in the right direction. And I think it's going to be great. I mean, we have great equipment. We have great software now. Um, we're eventually going to get all the right people in the right seats. And, and then I, I, I think it'll, I think it'll be good. Bruce, I want to, I want to tell you, so I was on, I, uh, I, I finished traction, Bruce. Um, but uh, I, f- I read this book called Vivid Vision. I don't know. Someone gave it to me. It's a really easy read. It's written by the COO of 1-800-GOT-JUNK, which is a really cool company. Um, and one of the things he writes about is uh, aligning your business like and sharing your vision with your team. Because a lot of times us as owners have a vision in our head. And if you asked everyone in the company to try to write out the vision, everyone would be wildly off. And so a lot of the alignment is actually in like publishing to your team, showing them what your vision is, and then quickly learning who doesn't agree with your vision and either removing them or making a change. Right. And so, um, I even like, you know, I would even challenge you, Leah is like, to actually write down, uh, all right, you know, in two years team, this is where we want to be. This is what 918 looks like. This is how we feel. This is what our, this is what our lunchroom looks like. This is what our company Christmas party is. Um, this is how many people we have. This is how many presses we're running. And then you just kind of start and wait and hear them and see like, do people get bought into that? Because I think what we sometimes as business owners fail to do is kind of what Bruce alluded to is, getting them bought into that long-term picture and showing them like, this can be really, really great. Bruce, did you ever do that at Printavo? Did you ever lay out a roadmap or a vision board or like a two pager on the company of, of how you imagined it? I feel like around 3 million we started to just because it was more streamlined. Like, um, it, it still felt a little early around maybe one to to just just getting things organized, like uh, making sure like the utility company doesn't uh, cut you guys off, like this type of stuff. But like at at like three, I felt I felt like wow, there's enough people where yeah, th- we need to think longer than next week or next month, um, and that started to help with. The, the, I'm sure that your coach does this, but on the, the attraction book, it was like, you create a 10 year goal or envision of what the, you want the company to look like. And that's revenue and people and team and everything. Then you go down to three, then you go down to one and then you break down the goals quarterly to try to get to that. Um, I think the hard part though is implementing it. Like it's easy to like spend a half day thinking about it. It was always hard to really make sure to mention it every meeting and talk about it and like progress towards it and track it and, and stay on it. Cause the second, like you're right, like things get so busy where it's hard to be able to remind people about it. Then we found that it was difficult to, to really execute. But anyway, sounds like you guys are in the right path. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious also on this gymnastics line because I have seen the cheer industry and I know this is different than gymnastics, but like they kind of do pair trade shows in some of the, the, I don't know if it's Atlantic city. I think it's Atlantic city and it's unbelievable. Um, 
and all the merch and everything and, and that's involved in it. So I'm sure gymnastics is something similar. And Leah Steven actually has his own jersey line too that he does and uses that to sell. So that's kind of cool. Is that, you talked about getting into that earlier with your kids. Is that what you then push to decorate or is this wholesale to others or what's the thoughts or how do you do that? So we do both. So when I first started the business, it was just, that was what we did is gymnastic stuff. And um, like I said, I still have a lot of customers in in the industry and Oklahoma is kind of a hotbed for gymnastics. We have a lot of Olympians that have came from Oklahoma Um, people like uh, Bar Connor and Shannon Miller. And yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of people and a lot of them still live here like Bar Connor and Nadia come and each live in Norman, Oklahoma and, and our clients of ours. Um, So, so there's, there's a, there's a lot in that industry, but yet it's a really tiny industry in the big picture. If you compare it to say baseball or something like that. So everybody knows everybody. It's kind of one big family. And, um, I enjoy working in that industry. It's a lot of really good people. And so we have gymnastics clubs that are our customers that we do like t-shirts and warm up jackets and rhinestones and glitter and all the stuff for. And then we also go to events, competitions, and then we sell um, generic um, gymnastics, you know, just shorts and tank tops and cute t-shirts and all that hoodies at the event. Um, and then we'll sell the event t-shirt. Um, we're, uh, we're licensed to USA Gymnastics. So we can do, you know, we can do like state apparel and regional apparel and things like that as well. And, um, it's just a part of the business. It used to be probably a half of my business. Now it's not because we do so much with schools and, and the trades and that type of thing, but it's definitely the part of the business that's near and dear to my heart. Cause I just really, really like people. Do you develop your own custom pieces like import style or do you just, do you kind of have like your own favorites? Tell us about that. Like you've created a niche here. Yeah, we, we don't import apparel. Um, we, we did that a couple of times and I don't know, it just seemed like with the, the logistics of it and the storage of it and the, it just didn't seem like it was worth it to me. It's just kind of not what we do. And so we just find cute clothes. I, you know, like I'll go to ISS next week and see if I see anything that's made in youth. And, um, you know, every once in a while I'll, uh, fly out to California and go through the garment district or something like that and see if I find something that's, you know, cute and youth that maybe everybody doesn't have. And then we just use stuff like Bella Canvas and Augusta and um, used to use Boxer Craft. They kind of got away from the the youth side. but And then we have our own designs that, that we put on the things. Gotcha. So it's like you kind of have your catalog. Um, I see that a lot in like CrossFit as well, like very niche very very niche do you do you do the bedazzling and the rhinestones too or is we that do. yeah how much fun um, is that it's uh, <laughs> well i definitely try not to be the one i i try to never weed or rhinestone those are my the two things i never ever want to get stuck doing um or polybagging because we do that by hand the, those three things i don't i don't want to be involved in um, but yeah, we do, uh, we don't do a lot of rhinestones like at events or anything like that. But I mean, like right now I have several orders of warm up jackets sitting there, um, that, that need rhinestones and glitter on them. They're, they're team jackets. And then you said you do like on site event apparel. Are you heat pressing on site, embroidering on site? Like what are y'all doing on site? Cause that's a uh, whole. Mainly, mainly heat pressing. If it's a big enough event, we'll take a couple, you know, one or two single head embroidery machines. Uh, we did men's uh, gymnastics nationals out in Reno, Nevada one time and in Oklahoma city one time. And, that was a really large event over many, many days. And we took embroidery machines, DTF, sublimation, you know, we, and heat pressing. We took everything. But most of the time, we just take one heat press and some transfers. Yeah. I think uh, being able to not say no to those things, like you're like, oh my gosh, what am I getting into? All right, now I'm here. <laughs> Uh, but that's how you get your business to the next level. And so, uh, those are memorable, definitely some memorable moments. I've had some battle, battle wounds from some live events. <laughs> well, I used to really like going and, and, 
and now I, I don't enjoy it. I, you know, I'm, of course, I'm older and being on the concrete 15 hours just doesn't seem as fun to me anymore. So I, I like to make appearances. Um, but I actually have uh, my my girl that runs the heat press shipping and uh, receiving Rayleigh. She enjoys going and her and I, uh, we've set up a profit split. And uh, so she makes pretty good money for working the weekend. You know, she gets to get stuck in a hotel and all that. She's young and enjoys that. Um, she can take someone with her if she wants. You know, I don't mind that. And so I actually have someone that does those for me for the most part now. So I, I, I can just show up and um, say hi to everyone and, and go about my day. Leo, we really appreciate you being able to share a lot of this. Uh, you've had some incredible growth here. I've just been poking around because I love the tech side on your website, just the SEO aspects. Um, this is a really great website if you're ever looking to redesign or get inspiration, 918 Design Company. Uh, from the search engine side to to the contact side to you know, kind of showcasing things, it really funnels you in. So anyway... From Tulsa, Oklahoma, Leah, we, we uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, guys. I, I value everything you say. I really do. I, I listen every week religiously. I take notes. Um, I, I learn something every single Wednesday. And, and I, I really appreciate the, the give back that, that you both do to the industry. It's, it's really valuable to all of us. Lee, I think this episode will resonate really well with shop owners because there are so many out there like in your shoes. And I just want to highlight again, the substantial growth from going from 300K to 1.4, 1.5 in three years is incredible. If there was like one piece of advice you could give a shop owner that was in your shoes, what would you, what would you tell them? Hire a coach and get Google reviews. <laughs> All right. There it is. And answer the phone. <laughs> and answer the phone. Yeah. There you go. I love it. For sure. We'll have to keep in touch and see and how the year to the turns podcast, out. Right? That's <laughs> listen, <laughs> like, and subscribe. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being on. And we'll have to keep in touch and, and see how uh, things are. And hopefully, screen printing, Matt Marcotte, I guess here's your shout out, too. So, yeah, this is sure. uh, another episode of the Print Hustlers podcast. All right. Thanks for joining in. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. Hopefully that was informative. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy all the stuff we're putting out, it's really helpful. We love to just be able to see it. That means that we're doing a good job. To subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and hit the like button. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.